We're for sharing innovative treatments and preventing disease before it ever develops. Learn how our team is working to better care for you on this edition of UVA Health System Radio. Here's Melanie Cole. Being an adolescent can be challenging enough, but being an adolescent while dealing with epilepsy can be even tougher. My guest is Dr. Jennifer Langer. She's a board-certified neurologist and neurophysiologist who specializes in caring for adolescents with epilepsy. Welcome to the show, Dr. Langer. First, give us a brief explanation, if you would, about what epilepsy is and how it affects adolescents. Sure. Thanks uh, so much for having me. Um, So first, epilepsy means a tendency towards having unprovoked seizures. And by unprovoked, I mean seizures that aren't caused by drugs or alcohol or medicine. It means a tendency the brain has towards having seizures. There's really two broad categories of epilepsy. The first is a generalized epilepsy, meaning seizures are detected everywhere in the brain at the same time, versus a focal or partial epilepsy where seizures start in one area. And adolescents can have either type. And adolescent epilepsy can really occur in two ways. The first is it can occur as children continue to have seizures through adolescence and young adulthood. So about 50% of kids with epilepsy will not outgrow their seizures, and they will continue into that time period. The second possibility are that uh, epilepsy and seizures start in adolescence, uh, and those, those patients can be a little bit different. So really, when children reach adolescence, as we said at the beginning, it's a pretty tough time anyway. What are some of the unique challenges that a child that's been diagnosed with epilepsy might face? Um, Absolutely. So I I think back to my my own period of adolescence, and I think all of us can, and it's a challenging time for everybody. There's physical changes, emotional changes, and social changes that happen. Um, And there's new new issues that that teens face. They face peer pressure. They face issues with driving and sports and new social challenges like driving, um, I'm sorry, like um, drinking, sex, um, and things like that. It's also a really critical time where identity forms. And all these things can be made more difficult and more challenging by having a chronic disease, um, particularly a chronic disease like epilepsy. If you have epilepsy as an adolescent, are you allowed to drive? What are the restrictions there? So good question. Um, The restrictions, first of all, are state-specific. In the state of Virginia, uh, adolescents or or adults, anyone who's had uh, a seizure cannot drive for six months after that seizure. So you're right, it has implications on starting driver's ed, on getting learner's permits, and then feeling independent, being able to drive by themselves. What about seizure awareness? As an adolescent, you have a lot of friends, you know, hopefully, and there's people around and at the school is there a seizure awareness that you think the adolescent needs to make people aware of so that if this happens, people know what to do because it can be quite frightening? So sure, I I always encourage my adolescents to let their friends know they have epilepsy, particularly if they have um, more frequent seizures. And I think it's important because number one, it reduces the stigma associated with epilepsy. So the more information we get out um, to teens and we get out to the schools, the more people know about epilepsy and the less frightened they are um, about encountering someone with epilepsy or not knowing uh, what to do if a seizure occurs. So I always tell my teens to let their friends and family know if they have a seizure, the best thing that their friends and family do, can do is stay calm, is to make sure they're in a safe place, lower them to the ground if it's a convulsion, um, turn them on their side, and just allow the seizure to continue while maintaining safety for the patient never put anything in the person's mouth. If they can uh, time it, that's often very helpful. Uh, Most seizures are short, lasting less than two or three minutes. If a seizure lasts longer than that, uh, then the rescue squad uh, or EMS should be called. What do you focus on to help your patients? What are the main sort of management things that you really truly focus on? Well, um, Being primarily an epilepsy doctor, my main focus is in the treatment of epilepsy. So for all my patients, my goal is always seizure freedom um, and seizure freedom without side effects of medicines. For the small percentage of patients with epilepsy that are intractable, meaning their seizures aren't well controlled with medicine, we often think of other approaches like epilepsy surgery, devices like a vagal nerve stimulator, 
um, or a diet treatment with a modified Atkins diet. So for me, the first focus is always on the treatment of epilepsy. But particularly in adolescence, there's also, I think, a really important additional focus, and that's on uh, quality of life, is that we, we know, like I said earlier, is that being a teen with epilepsy is really hard. So we try to focus a lot on how we can make that better. So whether it's teaching teens about their epilepsy because they were diagnosed as a kid and really never had a discussion with their provider themselves on why they have epilepsy, what epilepsy means. We focus a lot on the importance of taking medicine and troubleshoot, help, help teens troubleshoot, um, so taking their medicine more consistently. Uh, and we really help them focus on taking control of their epilepsy so that way as they grow older um, into adulthood, they're able to manage their disease by themselves. And that takes knowledge, uh, and that also takes empowerment. So we help both Dr. of those things. And then, also, and then also focus on just some of the ins and outs of living with epilepsy. And why should patients come to UVA's Adolescent Epilepsy Clinic for their care? So our adolescent clinic is the, is the only clinic of its type um, in the region. Uh, and that's because we, we really focus on adolescents as being different. As adolescents are not kids with epilepsy, and they're not adults with epilepsy and they have their own unique set of concerns, uh, and we focus on that. Uh, the clinic consists of myself, Mary Thompson, who's a nurse practitioner, uh, and Deborah Morley, who's our nurse coordinator, and all of us bring a different area of expertise to the care of adolescents. Um, in addition, we're housed inside um, an epilepsy center, uh, and the epilepsy center of UVA provides us with the ability to take care of patients who have really tough to control seizures and we have access to uh, different diagnostic testing uh, and treatment modalities uh, that would be afforded at any uh, large scale uh, epilepsy center. And in just the last minute or so, your best advice for the parents listening and the adolescents that have epilepsy? Uh, so I think first things first is you're not alone. Um, Epilepsy in adolescence is probably the most common uh, neurologic problem uh, in adolescence. So it's important to know that you're not alone. There's other teens out there, and there are places you can go for help. Um, so we're happy to see uh, teens that help with the management of epilepsy and help deal with the other problems that come along with epilepsy. Um, and there are also some, some reasonable web-based resources as, well, as well, including information that we have at UVA and others like epilepsy.com. Uh, that can provide some really good information for teens living with epilepsy. And you do advise them to let their friends know and take the stigma out of it and the school system so that everyone is aware and knows what to do in the case of a seizure, but it mostly focuses on preventing those seizures in the first place, correct? Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dr. Jennifer Langer, board-certified neurologist and neurophysiologist who specializes in caring for adolescents with epilepsy. You are listening to UVA Health Systems Radio. For more information, you can go to uvahealth.com. That's uvahealth.com. This is Melanie Cole. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.